Hi everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. Now, I want to talk about a subject today that is very, very important for anyone who's just getting into the hobby or for people that have been in the hobby for a very long time, and that is design and design techniques. Planning your aquarium, having an idea in mind, and following some really basic rules is so important in the design of a tank and uh, it can mean the difference between an absolutely beautiful tank or a tank that's just mediocre. And uh, I know that every one of you want a beautiful tank out there that you can be really proud of and something that can be long lasting and something that you can enjoy for many, many years. We're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about different designs, different techniques, and we're gonna get to that in just a minute here. When we talk about design and style, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that we have to have some kind of plan before we start to work on the hardscape and have some idea of what direction we're going in so that that tank is going to come out looking exactly or very close to what we have in our mind's eye about uh, what that aquarium is supposed to look like when we're done. There's so many different styles and there are absolutely a few rules that you have to have regardless of what style or um, design that you have in mind. And we're going to talk about some of that today. Now if you look at this particular tank in front of you here, this is sort of an island type design. It's basically um, a large piece of wood in the center and it has uh, some stones that go around. Uh, the edge and then of course uh, the planting of your plants and uh, basically what you're looking at here is what I call a really saturated planted island type style that is uh, something that I have found is uh, very important to keeping a tank healthy as far as how many plants you can put in there and I've mentioned this so many times over the uh, videos that I have put out that if you can plant as many plants as you can possibly do in a tank early on it makes it so much easier and it makes the tank so much healthier over the long term. When we talk about design and style one of the things that we have to keep in mind that there are a few basic rules about putting a design together and that is the rule of thirds or the golden rule or golden ratio I should say and that means that you have to keep in mind that your tank needs to be split up in thirds. In other words, a flow or natural flow of the tank in one direction that uh, gives balance to that tank and to your eye when you're looking at it straight on. Now this is a completely different design to the tank previous to this and uh, it is not an island style tank. This is more of a cliff style tank with a gradual decline to it that has the lower rocks, of course, in the front and then the higher rocks uh, working their uh, way towards the back with the substrate doing the same thing. This gives you a sense of depth, which is really hard to achieve without doing this technique. So it's very important to keep in mind that when you are putting a tank together that the rule of thirds or the golden ratio is so important. Almost every artist, whether it be a photographer, a painter, or a sculptor, or anything, the rule of thirds is so important because it does give an opportunity for you to use these rules to achieve what is a well-balanced to the eye technique that is going to make your tank that much more beautiful. So sometimes when we're talking about design, there's a misconception between design and materials and the design technique. Materials have absolutely nothing to do with the design other than the fact that you're choosing a particular type of stone, a particular type of substrate, you're choosing the type of uh, plants that you're going to be using in that tank. You're thinking about the type of fish that you are going to ultimately have in your tank. 
And all of these things are very important to decide before you ever get going. Now, what I recommend doing is a mock-up of some kind in a area that's laid out the uh, same size as what your tank is going to be and sort of playing around in, you don't have to use expensive substrate or anything in this mock-up. You can just have some dirt in there or some sand or whatever. And uh, that's easily cleaned off your materials uh, when you're ready to start uh, moving over to your tank and actually implementing the design that you have put together. Now, why I like these mock-ups is because it gives you an opportunity to see you know exactly how your tank is going to look before you ever get started. Now some of the things that we can't do with these mock-ups obviously is the planting and we don't see the fish in there but uh, you can get a general idea as to what your tank design is going to look like or start to develop into if you do this mock-up and I think it's so important that we do take the time to have a plan number one and number two, do a mock-up of some kind that gives you a visual idea of what ultimately that tank is going to look like. It's so important that we do that, and you're going to save yourself a lot of grief later on when you try to put this together. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about is wood. It's so important to understand that the wood often that we get is not something that uh, is not... Uh, going to go or is going to go directly to the bottom and stay uh, there. Most of the pieces of wood that you're going to get when you purchase them have not been in water at all and are not seasoned. So it's important to understand that sometimes you may have to have a bunch of wood. What I do is I take uh, a five gallon barrel, fill it full of water, and I buy different pieces of wood and I submerse it. In the, in the water so that these pieces of wood have been sitting in water for a long period of time and it does a couple of different things. Number one, it brings the uh, water into the wood and keeps it uh, you know, nice and heavy and stops it from floating. The second thing that it does is often with all kinds of different wood. Not every wood does this, but there's two processes that happen with wood when they're submerged in water, if they haven't been in water before. And that is number one, tannins come out of that wood. Whatever the color that wood is, you're going to see that end up in your water. If you wanna get rid of those tannins, soaking that wood is important because what it does is it leaches the tannins out and gives you an opportunity to have wood that will sit in your tank that is not going to change the color uh, unless you're doing a black water tank or something like that um, and you're doing that on purpose that's a whole different thing the second thing is that you will often find this slime that will develop on the wood over you know sometimes it can happen in the second or third day of putting your tank together during the cycle. And basically what that is, is a carbohydrate that comes out of the wood and becomes like a fungus of some kind. I don't know the exact name of that fungus, but uh, I will look that up and I will put it in the comment section at the end of the video. But this is a really, really ugly look and it absolutely stinks. It's one of the most smelly things that you're ever going to encounter in your fish tank. Uh, uh, I've had this happen to me a couple of times early on when I didn't know what I was doing or didn't understand uh, the process of seasoning wood and uh, making that wood uh, friendly to your tank. So keep those things in mind and understand that there are a few things that you need to do and take into consideration if you're going to do it correctly uh, that you're going to have to take some time on. You're going to have to understand that uh, if you don't do these things, you're just going to run into trouble later on. Now, if you do have wood that is not going to get this carbohydrate type fungus that develops on it, uh, which you don't know until you actually try it, but if you place it in some water for a week or so, you can often tell if this is going to start to develop or have a problem. And what I recommend is uh, if you do have wood 
that is not showing any signs of that and you can use it right away but you're still having a problem with the wood floating to the top you really don't want to use that wood until you have figured out a way to anchor it down and what I mean by anchor it down is to absolutely uh, take the wood and place it in your mock-up and see where it's going to sit take a picture of that and then when you start to develop your tank you know exactly how those pieces of wood go back in there if they are pieces of wood that you know are going to float you can test that real easy like I said you can place it in some water if it floats to the top you're gonna to have a problem so to anchor that down there's a couple of different things that you can do number one you can zip tie it the pieces together and you can hide that really easily by rock placement around it which means that that can throw your design off a little bit but if you're doing a mock-up you can sort of solve those problems before you ever get started the second thing that you can do and I think is the best way to do it is not use super glue because that's just not going to work uh, rock and uh, wood trying to super glue the two of those together uh, often is not something that works out very well. So what I recommend doing is taking some silicone that is tank friendly and siliconing those pieces to high points in your design that are going to be able to uh, be places that you can hide these little silicone areas uh, maybe by using substrate around them or placing other rocks in front of them but uh, you, you get the gist of what I'm saying here. But you can do that, let that season and sit overnight before you put any water in your tank. And you're going to find that this is going to save you a lot of problems down the road. We're going to talk about rock placement in a minute here and how important I think it is uh, to get a correct design. We're going to get to that in just a second here. Well, this tank here is a good example of rock placement and how important it is to have an idea of your design before you get started and to know exactly where you're going to place your rocks uh, to get your design going. Uh, the first two things in any design that are important is the substrate that you're going to be using. Now I use uh, fluval stratum. This has been a good substrate for me that has worked for me for just about every build that I've done. Uh, with few exceptions, I've used fluval stratum um, pretty much every time that I have put a build together. Now the second thing is when you're putting your substrate in to your tank, you want to put it um, on a slope and what I mean by that is you want to go from front to back your front part of your design of substrate should be lower and as you go back into the back of the tank that slope gets higher now what this does is it offers up some perspective on depth which is very important uh, so uh, that the eye sees that um, there is some very obvious um, uh, things that are tricking your eye into believing or to seeing that uh, the substrate uh, has a slope to it but you can't see it until you look at the tank from the side angle now what this does is it gives you an opportunity to use your taller rocks in the back and work your way down as you can see in here you have your taller rocks in the back and you work your way down and you have your smaller rocks running across the front area of the tank now as I talked about in the um, early part of this video we talked about the rule of thirds or the golden ratio now what we mean by that is you have a design where your rule of thirds is like this here you have one side of your tank that is very tall and works its way down and then you have this medium area and then you have a not as tall area on the opposite side that just draws the eye more towards this part of the tank right here which is very important because this is the focal point and when I look at this tank or 
most people look at this tank, one of the things that I ask them to do is tell me what do you see first? And almost 100% of the time they talk about being able to see this particular area right in here, which is important because that is the focal point of this tank. So rock placement is very important in the sense that you have to understand that where you place your rocks is going to make a huge difference on how the eye sees the tank long term. Now this has nothing to do with the plants. You can actually uh, do rock placement without having any plants in your mock-up and you can easily see where you're going to be placing those plants or you can get an idea of where you're going to place those plants and this gives you an opportunity to really um, see your design before you actually build it and gives you an opportunity to um, get some perspective on how that's going to look uh, before you ever start your build. And one of the things that's obvious is not all builds are the same. This here, for example, is like I said earlier in the video, is what I call an island design. And what this island design really offers to you is using the center of the tank as your focal point. Now this kind of goes away from the rule of thirds a little bit, but you can sort of continue that uh, rule of thirds or golden ratio by using the placement of the rocks in this area here, being that the taller rocks are on this side here, and you have a slope where the, the smaller rocks are here. Uh, the plants aren't going to offer up much on this because they do have a placement of being right dead in the center, but this is not a distraction to the eye for a couple of different reasons. There are so many plants in this tank, and I have to tell you, in this particular design, there are over 20 Anubius plants that are making up this middle section that is just one large piece of wood that I glued down, and it was a very lightweight piece of wood, had to be silicone down to a very large rock, and it doesn't matter what rock you're using, you're not gonna find, uh, for example, this maple wood stone isn't going to have uh, very many flat pieces. They just don't come that way. But you do have the ability to use whatever rock you want to, silicone that uh, down to, uh, your, your wood down to a heavy piece of stone and that gives you the ability to use that stone without seasoning it or putting it in water and uh, waterlogging it or soaking it um, before use. You can use it right away. Now what I've done with this particular design here is, like I said, I've incorporated a lot of Anubias in the design and I have really tried to make the center of attention on this build um, the plants that are in the middle. And as you can see, um, the rock formations that are in here start out low over here, they get higher, and then if you look at the piece over here, which is kind of hard to see in this particular part of the video, I wish I could uh, focal, focus on that a little bit more and uh, get that uh, to be a little bit more clear in the video, but unfortunately I've tried several different techniques to do that and I was unable to achieve it. But you uh, can just take my word for it. On this side here, it's really the stones in the back become much higher and even behind that, if you were standing up and looking at this tank, you would see that the stones are even higher behind the wood. It just happens to be the angle that we're looking at that we can't see that. Uh, one of the things that I would tell you with this particular design is you can hide so much, so many flaws in your tank and still come out with an absolutely beautiful design. So we've talked about the placement of your hardscape in your aquarium and we've talked a little bit in depth about how that should look. In other words, we've talked about um, using a slope on your substrate to give the aquarium a sense of depth. And we've also talked about placement of stones 
so that we're using that rule of thirds or that golden ratio to give the mind's eye the ability to see uh, the tank in a much more beautiful way because it is just a natural way of looking at things that artists have been using for centuries. Now, if you look at any painting, if you look at uh, aquariums, if you look at uh, landscaping, anything that you're looking at, if you're looking at the design of that, if the rule of thirds or the golden ratio is implemented, it's always a much more beautiful uh, uh, piece of work to look at, and it also gives a very good sense of um, beauty to the eye that you can't get uh, when things are all kind of goofy. Now, one of the things I want to talk about that I didn't talk about earlier with rock and hardscape is that if you are putting a tank together, uh, depending on the size of the tank and how many stones you're going to use, you don't want to use, as I've said before in other videos, I know this is not a new subject that I'm talking about right now, but I just want to recap it because it has everything to do with the designing of a tank. If you are using a odd number of stones in the tank, it is going to be so much easier on the eye and look so much nicer. We don't know why that is, but for some reason, when even numbers of, well, if it's a small number of stones, I should say, because there are some exceptions to this, but if it's a small number of stones from five to seven or something like that, you don't want to use four or six, for example, because the eye tends to see that as a flaw and uh, it sort of throws you off and it throws the design of the tank off. So if you're putting in a small amount of stones, anywhere from five to seven, you wanna use five rocks or seven rocks because it just, for whatever reason, gives you uh, the clarity in your eye as to the natural flow of things in there and for whatever reason, even numbers just really look strange in a tank uh, when you're doing that. So always use an odd amount of stones if you're doing a small build. If you get into a larger build, that goes out the window completely because it doesn't matter. If you look at this tank right here, for example, this is a very good example of a tank that has, I don't know how many stones in there, there's probably, you know, 10 to 15 stones in there. And uh, at that point, it really doesn't matter because the mind's eye cannot see how many stones you have. Um, it's just, it's just uh, gets lost in the design and it makes no difference at that point. So if you're doing something like this and you are using, um, you know, for example, 12 stones or 10 stones or an even amount of stones in the tank, uh, it's not gonna make any difference to you. So don't worry about that. Now for uh, a whole different perspective here, this makes all the difference in the world because you've got your center uh, island here of plants and then you have your stone starting with a small stone here, a little bit larger stone here, a little more larger stone here. Then we drop down to a smaller stone here because that doesn't really make any difference. And then we jump up to the larger stones here and in the back. Now you can't see the larger stone that's in the back here, but uh, when this tank was first started, uh, you couldn't even see, uh, or you could completely see, I should say, the stone that's in the back there. But these plants have done so well over uh, the period of time that this build has been done that uh, you can't even see that stone any longer. Um, now what I have thought about doing to sort of draw uh, the eye to that is to uh, put some more substrate back there or to build it up by putting a flat stone of some kind that you're never going to see anyway and then bringing that stone up and making it taller. And uh, that's something I may do. If I do that, I will show you the process of that uh, so that you don't mess your whole tank up. Because you're basically moving a stone around 
that may have plants that have rooted themselves to that stone or it's just you know so far down into the substrate that you just make a mess out of your tank it's easily cleaned up uh, but I don't want people to be doing that and mess their whole tank up and then be angry with me because it, it looks like it's a mess. Uh, you can clean that up so easily. You can basically go in there with a turkey baster and just squish it around and blow off anything that might have ended up on your leaves and it will all settle back and look perfectly fine. But uh, to avoid that, what I recommend is bringing your water level down to about half turning off your pumps and your heater and all that, making sure you do that so you don't burn anything out because in these style tanks, when you have the built-in filtration system in the back, you are going to have a situation where that water drains out of the back and doesn't have enough to pump water correctly and burns up the pump and your heater, which I don't have that problem because I have heaters that have an automatic shut off if they're not in water, but if those are expensive and most people can't afford those and don't bother with them but any time you're using a heater like that you don't have to worry about that but just as a good practice my recommendation is to unplug your pump and your heater and uh, leave your light on because you're going to need that obviously to see what you're doing and then you have no blowing around of anything into your tank and you can easily uh, take that rock out of the back that we were talking about Put a flat stone in there and it doesn't matter like I said what kind of stone it is just something that's going to raise up the level of that rock in the back and when you do that you can start to see that uh, rule of thirds or that golden ratio come back into play we're going to talk about plants in a minute here plant placement can be so important to the look of your tank and it is very much a part of the design and it's very much something you need to think about before you do a complete design on your tank. When you're doing a mock-up, like I said, you cannot see where your plants are going to be, but if you know what you're doing and you have an idea generally of the kind of plants that you're going to use, you can get away with doing that mock-up and then putting it, transferring the mock-up to your tank and uh, getting a good idea and uh, where your plants need to go to keep that rule of thirds in place and to give it that look that just makes it absolutely magical. So we're gonna talk about plants in a minute here and we're gonna talk about uh, what I think is the best technique for putting plants in your tank uh, that is a little controversial, but uh, the bottom line is more and more people are implementing this um, design technique or these planting techniques and I think you're going to enjoy that and uh, get some really really good uh, benefits from listening to how I do this and how it can make your life a lot easier. As I said plants are sort of the finishing touch of any tank and what I do generally is what they call a dry uh, planting uh, sort of style. Now this is sort of controversial because some people believe that the dry style uh, is a little bit dangerous to the plants but what I suggest you do is give it a try. If you don't like it you can always go back to the uh, standard way of planting which is to uh, put a small amount of water up to about your substrate line and then put your plants in um, in hopes that they anchor really well. One of the problems with that is, is oftentimes you will get your, your complete tank scaped and you will find that uh, what happens is some of those plants, as you sort of move them around in the tank uh, while planting with this process, you'll find that some of them after you're done will just simply float to the top. And the reason for that is, is because anytime you have moisture around the substrate area here, anytime there's moisture in that substrate, it doesn't allow for those plants to anchor themselves or be put tight up against those rocks. So my recommendation is to do a dry planting style which really means that you're taking 
especially uh, your low-lying plants um, that are going to be in the front of your tank, the smaller plants that uh, um, have the most ability to sort of float to the top because there's really not a lot to them to anchor. If you use the dry technique, basically what's happening is you're putting the plants and their small amount of roots that come with them right into the substrate here with no water in the tank at all and you're getting them in there exactly the way you want them. Now what you have to do because these plants can dry out, they're not used to being in a dry environment, is you have to go along with a uh, water bottle that sprays some water into uh, the area where the plants are and you have to go along and spray them and keep them wet. But what this does at the same time, and the reason why I like this dry technique, is it gives you the ability to spray and then the rocks that are surrounding the root system and the bottom of the plants in here are going to tighten up even more as that water gets around them because they're not submersed in water. They're just getting a moisture that packs it down and it's a really, really great technique. Now, Everyone knows that's been in this hobby for a while that the most important thing about plant placement is that you work from front to back with your smaller plants in the front here, your medium plants in the center here. On this particular scape, it doesn't matter, but I'll show you a different scape where it does. Uh, this Anubius here, I put the smaller ones down at the bottom and the taller, larger plants up at the top. Let me see if I can pan to the top a little bit without making the camera really jittery. As you can see, the larger leaves uh, are really at the top of the tank, and this really gives you an idea on how uh, we go from small to large. Also, the swords that are in the back over here and also on this side are going to be the taller plants over time. In fact, they are taller right now. Unfortunately, with the camera angle, they don't look that way, but they are much taller than this clump of clump, I should say. I said clump. Uh, clump of Anubius that is in the center here uh, really is beautiful, and it's full and healthy, and as you can see, we're getting to the point where we're actually starting to see some flowering uh, right here that is happening. That is a sign that your tank is absolutely healthy and getting the nutrients it needs. And uh, those plants are responding by putting out new growth all the time. And they're also responding by putting out flowers. Flowers are the ultimate to a plant's health. In other words, when you start to see flowers on your plants, you can be guaranteed that those plants are healthy and in good shape and getting all the nutrients that they need. I'm not intentionally trying to limit myself to two aquariums today, but I thought that these were the best two examples of aquariums that I personally have that shows you completely different design techniques, uh, both with hardscape and with plants that give you an idea of how you can have an endless idea of scapes that uh, are just, you know, wherever your imagination can go, you can design something uh, that is just unique to you, but also uh, doing it by following the rules that we talked about. Now, when we talk about uh, the planting in this tank, as you can see, there is a ton of uh, plants that are right here in the front of the tank. These are our sort of low-lying bed plants that uh, are going to fill in all these little areas in here and over time. This tank is not that old, so that has not uh, happened yet. Uh, they are starting to sprout, uh, get some runners, and we are starting to see some offshoots of that, and they're starting to fill in very nicely. Now, one of the plants that I would tell you uh, is a very difficult plant to work with and that is Monte Carlo. We talked about that in one of my other videos here recently and I still stand by that. It can be a very, very difficult plant to keep going, but once it does, man oh man, it's gonna be one of those plants that's gonna carpet 
your whole aquarium and even smother out some of your other plants and you really got to be careful to keep it trimmed back but as you can see as we move to the center of the tank we've used just some small anubias like in this area right here that are tucked into little areas in the rock that allow us to do that but we also have in this area right down here if this angel would move out of the way here um, I'm trying to distract him you can see that we have mosses that I have glued to these rocks now moss will stick to these rocks with super glue make sure it's a uh, tank friendly super glue and you have the same thing going on over in this area here and along the tops of the rocks up in here and up in this area as well and then we start to get into the crypts that are a little bit higher and uh, there's several kinds of crypts back in here that uh, really really are beautiful and really give some uh, height to uh, the back of the tank and then we get further back and we start to see some of our swords some Amazonian swords uh, I don't know all of the names of the plants that are in here I will put that in the comment section or information section I should say below and uh, list the plants that are in these two tanks that we've been using today um, as a um, design uh, idea for what you might be able to do now you're not necessarily going to come out with a beautiful design like this the first time you try but don't kick yourself for doing that because none of us ever started out putting uh, tanks together that look this nice without having to work at it a little bit and having to go through some uh, unfortunate situations where we've put a tank together and we've looked at it as we've perfected our techniques over time and we've said man I just don't like that near as much as I did when I put it together you know half of the fun is having these tanks uh, put together but the building of them to me is everything it's so important to me and I think that uh, you're gonna find that out too that after six months to a year Many of your tanks that you have in your home or your office or if you have a fish room like I do, you're going to find out over time that you might get tired of a design or it may get old to you and you want to do something different. And don't be afraid to tear these down and start over. Um, if you've got several tanks, you can put your fish someplace else temporarily. Use the same substrate that's in the tank to have an automatic cycle so that you don't have to worry about it but you can take this right down to nothing or you can strategically do something different so anyways um, we're going to finish up here in a minute talking about some other things that i think are going to be important to design that we haven't talked about yet that i want you to think about before you start putting a tank together and we're going to do that in just a second here so as you can see, there are endless design ideas out there that you can use and some of the techniques that I'm talking about or have spoke about today are very important that you use those techniques in order to come up with a really beautiful design uh, that you're going to be happy with long term. There's nothing worse than uh, starting a, a build on a tank and then when you're done you're just not happy with it and you have to get in there and uh, make major changes to it that can be just so disheartening because it's so difficult to take a tank like that and try to redesign it around some things that you didn't think of or some ideas that uh, maybe you don't like um, that you thought about you thought they would look good and then you find that they don't look as good as you thought uh, that's that's something that you want to try to avoid as I said if you can do a mock-up of your design and try to stay with that design idea as best you can you're going to be a lot happier in the long run because you're going to come up with something that was in your mind's eye and you're going to put it into this tank and it's going to be exactly what you had hoped it would be don't be disappointed if you have to make some changes here and there, that's just part of 
uh, hardscaping. It's uh, something that happens to all of us, even people like me who've been doing this for a very long time and have a really good background in design ideas. I still make mistakes to this day and I have to fix them, but the idea is to minimize those design flaws uh, that you didn't quite think about or problems that may arise that have nothing to do with your design idea but just happen to uh, be problematic when you get in the middle of it or when you get to the end of it. Don't be afraid to, before you add fish, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute here about adding your fish to the tank. Don't be afraid to take your water level down during the middle of a cycle and uh, you're going to be doing water changes anyway in the middle of a cycle if you're doing a full natural cycle and it's not a seeded tank. This is going to give you an opportunity to play around with some of these rock placements and plant placements, uh, taking some plants out for example that you may not like. Um, you just thought they were going to look nice and they ended up not looking nice. This is all part of learning and it's not a big deal. Don't kick yourself too hard about technique and design uh, that if you haven't done it very often you're going to run into situations where you're just not going to have a perfect setup and don't be afraid as I said to get in there and move some things around even if it means that it's a little stressful or a little hard to do because in the big picture you got a lot of money invested in these tanks and it's very important that we get it right, especially uh, when you can get a tank that can cost you up to several thousand dollars by the time you're done. It doesn't have to cost you that much and that's going to be a video we're going to be talking about soon on how to design a tank on the cheap. And when I mean cheap, um, cheap's not a good word, a low budget design tank that is beautiful because not everybody has endless amounts of money and they can throw it into their tank. So anyways, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about some of these techniques and just go over them one time with you because I'm getting a little heavy on time on this video, but I do want to make sure that you get your selection of stone. There's all kinds of stone out there. There's maple stone, there's Frodo stone, there is dragon stone, there's Syria stone. Uh, I mean, there's just an endless amount of stone out there and there's new stones coming up on the market all the time. In fact, I was just over in Montana and we picked up some Red River stone out of some of the lakes up there that is just absolutely beautiful. And we're going to be doing a build for my son. It's a 50 gallon with some of these stones and uh, man, it's just absolutely breathtaking. Uh, the contrast between a dark substrate in these stones it is just absolutely beautiful. It's very similar to me um, to using red lava rock with dark substrate and the contrast of the green plants and the red plants that are in the tank. And uh, I think that if you figure out the kind of stone that you want to use, the substrate that you're going to be using, whether it be sand uh, over the top of the substrate, because you cannot plant plants in directly in sand. They're just not going to do well. And uh, you got to keep that in mind when you're doing it. You can have these beachy front areas in your design, but below those need to be a substrate where the roots of your plants go in and uh, they have the uh, nutrients and uh, the ability to grow and the sand is really just a, a, something that's for look. Um, having that design idea in place, doing the mock-up like I said, the rule of thirds or the golden ratio, all of those things, having them in place and doing those before you actually start your build is going to make a difference to the long-term um, uh, look of that design, something that you're going to be happy with for a long period of time. And like I said a few minutes ago, don't be afraid to dig in there and change some things if you have to early on because you're going to be so much more happier if you make those changes early on 
rather than trying to do it, you know, three months down the road when you say, oh, I just don't like that. I never liked that from the beginning, but I didn't want to do the work. Do the work early and do those changes before you ever uh, start stocking your tank with fish. Now, when I talked about we were going to, uh, when we talked about stocking your tank with fish early on, I told you we were going to talk about what my opinion is on doing that. I think whenever you're doing a build, for example, in this tank here, I knew this was going to be tetras and angelfish with a few African, not African, but uh, South American small cichlids that uh, are sort of mild-mannered fish and uh, lots of uh, uh, algae eater auto cichlids and quarries and placosinus and stuff like that. Um, I knew that that's what this tank was going to be filled with. So whenever you're thinking about a build, think about ultimately what kind of fish you're going to put into that tank and how well they're going to do in that environment. For example, the type of stone that you're using may alter your pH uh, in many ways. The, amount, the kind of substrate that you're using could alter the pH in many ways. Uh, you've got to think about all of these things and if you do that stuff early on and you just follow the techniques that I talked about in this video, you're going to be so much happier in the long run. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and use that comment line. I love to hear the comments because I may have said something that you disagree with or I may have forgot to mention something that was important to the design techniques that I talked about that you may have some input on. I want my followers to read those and be able to see your comments below if I miss something so that we give everyone the opportunity to uh, sort of avoid having problems with a design early on. Thank you for joining me. We're going to have some really special stuff coming up in the near future. I hope you'll join me. Hit the bell. I'm not sure which side it's on up here so that you always know when I do have a new video coming out. That's important to me. Subscribe and like. It's so important for me to have those because it helps me with sponsors and it also helps me to understand uh, what you like and you don't like as far as content goes. Thank you, and we'll be talking again soon.